Hello there, I'm Ji Sung, and this week's Culture Mosaic is packed with exciting news for you. Everything from traveling to Guangning province to learn all about bamboo fishing baskets to meeting with a group of Vietnamese and Swedish musicians passionate about melanging Vietnamese and Occidental instruments to even a flag dancing group hailing all the way from Belgium. All that and more in this week's edition of Culture Mosaic. The art of making bamboo fishing baskets. The Six Tones group and efforts to combine Vietnamese and Western instruments. And the Belgian flag dancing group Redon. Into news now on the cultural scene here in Vietnam. 48 artworks on the theme of war were being showcased in an exhibition entitled The Unforgettable Years. The event was organized by the Vietnam Fine Arts Museum as part of activities to celebrate the War Invalids and Martyrs Day on July 27th. The artworks depict the brutality and devastation of the war, yet are still full of hope through images of the soldiers' families and their relationship with civilians. The artworks not only have high artistic value, they also help people to appreciate more the sacrifices that war veterans have made for the country. A ceremony took place by the Taikan River in Guangxi province to honor the country's war martyrs and veterans. This took place on the 20th of July. The event saw thousands of veterans laying down flowers onto the water to pay their respects to fallen soldiers who lost their lives during the 81-day battle in 1972 to protect the Guangxi ancient citadel. Vietnamese architects have recently emerged on the world stage, receiving international recognition. Among these many architects is a man named Huang Thuc Hao, who won the Vasilis Sugutas Prize for his architectural work. This is a prestigious award issued once every three years by the International Union of Architects, or UIA, for excellent contributions in sustainable architecture to mitigate poverty. UIA experts highly regarded Hao's work in improving living standards for people in remote areas with respect for the local customs and traditions. Projects such as the Lung Luang Highland School, the Langdet Rural House and the Lao Cai Worker Shelters point the way forward in the Vietnamese communal architecture scene. Orchards and fruit gardens are among the must-visit places when traveling to the Mekong Delta region of the country. Surrounded by a dense river system rich in alluvial soil, this place is the largest fruit basket in the country. On the journey to the south of Vietnam as part of the Vietnam Summer Camp 2017 for overseas Vietnamese youth, these youths had the opportunity to enjoy a unique experience in the fruit gardens of Cai Bê District of Tien Giang Province. Traveling more than 70 kilometers from Ho Chi Minh City, these overseas Vietnamese youths have come to the Cai Bê Ecotourism Park, located along the northern bank of the Thien River in Tien Giang Province. It is also the largest fruit basket of the Mekong Delta region, with many famous specialties. To these youths, the most interesting activity perhaps is picking the fruits by themselves and freely tasting them as they go. Ngon. 
hầu như là em không được ăn mít bởi vì nó một là đắt này hai là nó không ngon thực ra mít từ đá thôi nên nó đúng chắc chắn không ngon có được có mà. cả mít đông đá nữa <cười> bên kia xì hoa quả việt nam xì rất rất là đắt thế nào được về việt nam ăn thế nào xì rất là sướng thế nào mẹ em cứ bảo là về việt nam cứ ăn thế nó đầy đi sang bên kia không có đâu sang bên kia xì đắt lắm The journey to the south also provides these young people with the opportunity to explore the daily life of the southwestern Vietnamese people, in addition to trying the specialties of the Mekong Delta. Products made of woven bamboo are a familiar sight here in Vietnam. They are a symbol of rural village life. Since bamboo trees are strong, durable, and waterproof, farmers have used them to make fishing gears for centuries now, and even until today. In this week's edition of Culture and Lifestyle, we'll see how the skilled hands of Vietnamese craftsmen make the bamboo fishing baskets. This is one of the most unique fishing techniques in Vietnam and around the world. Fishing is one of the oldest methods for Vietnamese people to get food. Over time, many types of fishing gear has been developed. In Hương Học Village, Quảng Ninh Province, making bamboo fishing baskets is a long-held traditional craft. Even all the villagers like Mrs. Bing do not know when their ancestors started making bamboo fishing baskets. But according to her, the first baskets were made to catch gobi, a familiar fish in every village. Chẳng hạn như con cá bống thì phải có mồi. Còn những loại cá rô với cá quả với con tép, con tôm đấy là không phải mồi gì cả. Thì cứ thả xuống thôi. Thế là nó cá dìa với cá xong thì nó có cái mồi cơm nguội với này những cái rau mình ăn còn những cái gốc vùng rồng đấy. Xong nó băm vào với cái quả vào đấy thì nó vào, nó ăn thì nó chui vào cái nờ đấy. Thì hớ hên thì cạn kênh thì nờ vào thì cá vào đấy. Đấy, dìa đó. bắt đầu từ cây nứa, xong trẻ ra, xong vót, xong làm từng tí, từng tí, từng tí một đấy, xong mới thành dụng cụ để mới lại vừa đóng vào thì mới thành được một cái nồng như vậy. cứ đông người thì được hai ba chục, một một người thì được hai ngày một chục. Bamboo fishing baskets from Hưng Học Village are made not only to serve residents, they are also a business for the village. Though people here only make baskets in their free time, it is still a main source of income. Ở đây chỉ cứ sản xuất ra thôi, nghề ngồm làm ra cũng cái nồng thôi thì những các nơi ở xa xôi cái dòng miền đông miền tây các nơi về đây nó mua nó về nó đi giống thôi chứ ở đây thì chỉ sản xuất ra kinh doanh ra làm thôi bán thôi chẳng hạn như bây giờ con gái đi đến chồng đấy đi các nơi đấy lại sản xuất lại làm ra lại bán kể cả bây giờ ở đâu con gái mà đã lấy chồng đi là nó có cái nồng này nó bán này As society develops, fishermen change the way they fish, and traditional gear like fishing baskets are less widely used. These bamboo products are an example of the creativity and skill of the Vietnamese people. As long as bamboo fishing baskets exist, the rustic traditions of village life will go on.
Culture Mosaic is a weekly journal here on VTV International, looking to give you, our viewers, the latest scoop on the cultural scene here in Vietnam. Whether it be the diversity and richness of century-old heritage or the dynamic and exciting vibe of the modern Vietnam, we hope to bring you the many facets of the cultural and artistic soul here in the country. So don't go away as we have many more news coming your way. The Six Tones is a group of musicians from Vietnam and Sweden which has been working on the way to play Vietnamese traditional music in hybrid setting by combining traditional Vietnamese and Western stringed instruments including the dan bow and the dan chang as well as the guitar. They are now cooperating with an acclaimed American composer who is known for his work with contemporary voice and desynchronization sound production in composition. We'll sit down now with one artist from the group to hear more about their stories in this week's edition of On the Mic. This is an excerpt from Inside Outside, an installation project by the Six Tones. The group has two Vietnamese musicians, Nguyen Thu Thuy and Ngo Chia Mi, and a Swedish musician, Stefan Osterjo. They have been creating ways to modernize Vietnamese musical instruments and combine them with Western elements through experimental and installation performances. This is their recent performance in Hanoi, marking the beginning of the cooperation between the group and Michael Edgerton in their effort to renew traditional music. joining our show. So in singing, the combination between human voice and musical instrument has been around for thousands of years. So what is special about the combination between the six tones and Professor Michael Edgerton? How did you come up with the idea for the collaboration? My collaboration with Mike goes back all the way to 2002 when we started the first project. For me, he's always been one of the truly radical composers around and there, there are several things that are interesting about his work. The first one was, was more about you know, how you can challenge tradi traditional playing techniques on acoustic instruments. And the other one is his, his research on, on the human voice and the experimental vocal techniques. These as a backbone or as a reference for me and the, the ways in which I've followed his work over the years. Can you tell us what is its aim? The, the one we're setting up now is explorative and, and, uh, uh, and a little less um, predictable. It's set in a wider space. For a group like the Six Tones that is exploring the relation between traditional music in Vietnam and using instruments fr from, from traditional music here in combination with Western instruments and also vocal techniques and, and you know how you, can, how you can use research in these fields to uh, develop and question, you know, how, how these instruments are understood and, and the, 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 the performance practices around them. I would say it is um, going to become quite a substantial and, and, and probably quite challenging project. Professor Michael Edgerton is an American composer who is at the forefront of vocal exploration by extending the technical and expressive capabilities of voice. He has spent years investigating sound production and composition. His work focuses mostly on voice composition, pedagogy, and research. You can think of it in terms of uh, unusual sounds or complex contexts. You have different sorts of sounds that you might not be used to hearing in a musical context. Basically, when you hear contemporary music uh, in cultures that, that have a history with this stuff, what you end up hearing are a lot of strange sounds in very strange contexts. So um, the popular music that we hear on the radio or television is something that is, is uh, people avoid those types of those patterns. With those cultures that have those traditions, we try to do different things, perhaps even new.
So there are two Vietnamese artists in your group, and you've collaborated with them for over 10 years. So how has Vietnamese music influenced the way you play Western musical instrument? I mean, when we started working with the six tones, the, and, and the, this was common to all the other uh, intercultural pro projects that I set up in the 2000s, um, they all built on the idea of mutual learning. So the traditional, the musicians from another culture would learn, you know, from, from composers and performers in, in, in the West. Uh, but these performers would also learn traditional music from the musicians that, you know, were part of the project. So the first thing that we did was that I started looking for ways to adapt traditional Vietnamese music to the 10 string guitar. So I, I play often with the slide so that you're able to do these longer bending uh, ornaments that you, that you find a lot on the Dan Chang. And I tuned the guitar differently so I'd, I'd have two strings that were the same pitch. So you can also make a glissando and immediately be back on the same note as you can do on a Dan Chang. One thing that I think we all like about playing traditional music on Dan Bo, Dan Chang and 10 string guitar is that you add a lower register that doesn't exist in any of the Vietnamese instruments. So you can you get a wider pitch range in, in a music which otherwise is, is sort of very in, in, in its essence still the same. The first project performed by the Six Tones was Tứ Đại Oán, or Four Great Sorrows, a traditional piece of Cải Lương singing. It was performed by Dan Chang player Nguyen Thanh Thuy and guitarist Stephen Osterger. Khi mà các nhạc cụ phương Tây chơi vào cùng thì rõ ràng là không còn là nhạc của mình nữa. Và cái cảm giác giống như mình cũng hơi bị khựng lại, muốn đẩy cái nhạc kia ra, mình không muốn họ hòa vào cùng với âm nhạc truyền thống của mình. Từ đó mình mới suy nghĩ là tại sao mình lại lại có cái cảm giác như vậy? Vậy thì vấn đề là đâu? Và làm thế nào để bây giờ âm nhạc truyền thống hoặc nhạc cụ truyền thống kết hợp được với họ? Chúng tôi phải học lắng nghe uh, âm nhạc của nhau hoặc là học lắng nghe cái âm nhạc của mình ở bên ngoài cái truyền thống của mình. Through these observations, the artists in the group have come up with new techniques of playing the traditional music such as playing the Dan Chang with a slide or a bow and using a screw to play the Dan Bo. Trước tôi, tôi không thể có một cái ví dụ nào để mình học hỏi theo cả. Mình phải tự làm và mình phải tự kiểm nghiệm và mình phải tự tìm con đường của mình. À, với mình thì mình chỉ muốn rằng là mình làm cho cây đàn của mình trở nên thú vị hơn và à, có thể có nhiều cách diễn tấu hơn để cho mọi người thấy rằng là cây đàn của mình không chỉ gẩy theo cách truyền thống được mà còn có thể chạy gẩy được rất nhiều và chơi được rất nhiều trong những cái, cái thể loại âm nhạc khác mới hơn và hiện đại hơn. What do you think about modernizing traditional music? Well, that's a very big question because, and this is something that we are very engaged in. Chami and, and Tang Thuy have a background in, 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 in a movement that wanted to preserve the traditional music. If you look at how traditions exist in a, in, in a healthy environment, it changes. So I think we, we are very strongly convinced that to preserve a tradition, it also needs to change. Um, and therefore, you know, with traditional music in modern society, you, you sort of need to allow a span. The old way of thinking of, of preservation is that you should keep everything the same. But that's not how music works. It always changes. So, so the, the true preservation is really also to it has to do with allowing music to change. Again, thanks for joining our show and we wish you the best of luck in your future projects.
Around the latter half of July, the audiences in Vietnam has had the chance to welcome the first-class Belgian dance group Redon and were treated with spectacular flag dancing performances. Now, Redon is a group of about 190 young people from the age of six with a passion and a talent for flag bearing, modern dance and drumming. They perform abroad every summer and this time they've just finished their two-week-long tour across Vietnam by a series of performances in front of the Hanoi Opera House. In our Connecting Cultures this week, we'll get a chance to meet with this talented dance group and learn more about the time that they have spent here in Vietnam, as well as about the art of flag dancing. A sunny Wednesday afternoon passes by at the Hanoi Opera House was treated to a pleasant surprise. A group of dancers assembled in front of the Opera House gave a series of performances. Colorful flags flying in the air joined with skillful acrobatic movements. These spectacular acts were performed by Verdon, a group of talented young dancers from Belgium who specialize in flag throwing, a modern dance and drumming. The show or the performance you saw today is part of a, a show we did a couple of months ago in Belgium. The show we did now uh, was called Ete Soiree, which means uh, summer, in fact, um, the summertime as we experienced it being a kid. So that's why the colorful flags from our childhood, from the beach and so on. The performances were staged at the request of the Embassy of Belgium in Vietnam to congratulate the Hanoi Opera House on its new direction as a tourism attraction. It also coincided with Vodong's cultural exchange tour. Every year we are traveling or visiting a different country and uh, this year we have chosen Vietnam. It's our mission and vision to meet people everywhere in the world through culture, through joy, and through performing. Flag dancing was always a strong, a strong point in our group. Not many groups are still doing it, are still uh, performing with flags, but it's, it's a tradition from the countries we come from. Dating back to medieval times, the art of flag throwing began in Italy as a way to celebrate victories in battle and other major events. It later spread to different countries in Europe and became a tradition in festivals. With a desire to bring this tradition to the world, Vodong rigorously trains its member in acrobatic flag throwing together with modern dance. Founded in 1980 in East Flanders, Belgium, Vodong contains students as young as six who want to learn flag throwing, modern dance and drumming. Vodong's flag throwers are internationally known for their acrobatics and choreography. We started in fact being more traditional flag waving and more traditional dancing, but through the years uh, we created more acrobatic flag waving on modern music and more choreographic dances rather than classic dances. And that's how we that's that's what the kids that's what the kids want as well. They like the modern music and they like modern dancing rather than uh, ballet or, or traditional dancing, let's say. About 20 times a year, Vodong performs in parades or on stages throughout the world. The group also takes part in cultural exchanges and makes tours across various countries. This year they chose Vietnam as a destination which they have been touring since July the 16th. Vodong started in Ho Chi Minh City and traveled north through cities and provinces, holding workshops and performing at schools and universities, as well as enjoying local and tourist activities, making fond memories. We went to Da Nang, uh, Hoi An, Hue. Now we are in Hanoi. Um, two days before we were at, uh, in Mai Chau at the White Thai. So it was really enjoyable trip for us because it's a um, completely different world compared to Europe, compared to the easy life we have. Temperature is extreme for us, it's really hot, but, but we really enjoyed it. The people are very friendly, the food is very good, very tasty. So for us it was a 100, 120% success. 
The art of flag throwing may have begun in Europe, but by bringing their colorful flags around the world, Vodong has introduced a European tradition to many countries and cultures. The group will continue their stay in Vietnam until July the 30th, before moving to the next destination and flying their flags in a new sky. And that also wraps up this edition of Culture Mosaic. If you would like to provide any feedback or comment on anything you've seen here on our show, please feel free to write to us at vtvinternational at vtv.vn. And make sure to include both your name and address. You can also log on to our website at vtv4.vn or, as always, our YouTube channel at vtv4go for more of our program. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of Culture Mosaic. Until then, goodbye for now.